We know that the mass of the object being orbited factors into the force of gravity, and we also know that the force of gravity depends inversely on the square of the distance, which is good because there's a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy with a mass of about four million times the mass of the sun. If gravity didn't diminish with distance, we'd be in big trouble. But what else does it depend on? For instance, if I hold a key and a book above the ground, which experiences a greater gravitational interaction with Earth? And if I release them, which one will fall first? Doesn't that mean that gravity is somehow the same on everything on the surface of Earth? It's a common misconception, but remember, having the same resulting acceleration does not mean that the forces are the same. If you remember Newton's second law, F equals ma tells you that if you want the acceleration to be the same, as in the key and the book example, the net force has to be greater for the greater masses. But what about the book's effect on Earth? The book is obviously accelerating downward, so it would look like the Earth is somehow just sitting here oozing all this gravity, and books and keys and people are just helplessly caught up in all of that. But Newton's third law tells you that this can't be the case. If Earth exerts a force on the book, then the book has to exert a force on Earth. In fact, if you look at the equation for the force of gravity, you see that it represents an interaction between the masses. You can change the order m1 and m2, but it won't change the answer. Now, the force of gravity that you exert on Earth is exactly the same in magnitude, but opposite in direction that the force of gravity that Earth exerts on you. The difference is that Earth outmasses you by a factor of about 100 billion trillion. The acceleration Earth experiences as a result of interaction with you is 100 billion trillion times smaller than your acceleration as you fall off a roof.